Arc Vector First Ride Review, New Driving Experience. Radical front ends are a difficult sell. Despite having thousands of acolytes, many of whom have spent decades trying to convince the motorcycling world that hub center steering is a pure and brilliant engineering alternative to the compromises of the telescopic fork, we don't buy it. Motorcyclists, as a whole, are not yet so keen on electric propulsion either. We know it's coming and that it's getting better, but for now we'll stick with the gas burners we know and love, thanks. Other futuristic concepts, like head-up displays and smart crash helmets? Erm, neat ideas, but we'll take a rain check. All of which should mean that the Arc Vector, which features all of the above for a stratospheric £90,000 sterling price tag, is up against a brick wall and without a hope of making a single sale. But, no, despite its hub center steering, its 117 horsepower AC motor, and soon to be realized head up display, HUD, ARC's order book is filling up nicely. Furthermore, ARC has an all but finished bike ready to go and invited Cycle World to give it a quick blast on the roads around the company's HQ in the UK's English Midlands. The ARC Vector is the idea of ARC founder and CEO Mark Truman. The bike was revealed to the public at ECMA in 2018, stunning the motorcycling world with its dramatic hub center steering and claimed range of 271 miles and recharge time of just 40 minutes. It looked like the most advanced electric motorcycle ever made, and skeptics muttered the concept would remain just that. The company went into administration in 2019 when key investors removed themselves from the project, but Mark and his company bounced back, and earlier this year conducted the Vector's final testing with former MotoGP racer James Ellison. The ARC seriously challenges convention at every turn. There is no frame as we know it, instead, the chassis is a carbon monocoque housing for the 16.8 kWh battery cells and motor. One of the benefits of its hub center steering compared to telescopic forks is that it separates braking, suspension, and steering forces, which allowed ARC to run a relatively light spring in the frontal lean's TTX shock along with a dramatically steep head angle of 20 degrees, compared to a normal sport bike's 24 to 25 degrees, without compromising stability. The pivot point of the front shock is located below the front wheel spindle, which, unlike most other hub-steered bikes, allows the front to dive slightly like a conventional telescopic fork, creating a familiar sensation of weight transfer when braking. Both front and rear arms are carbon fiber, bolting directly to the carbon monocoque, as are the beautiful BST wheels. In a rare instance of conformity there are Brembo Stylema brakes up front, plus a full carbon seat unit, keyless ignition, via a wrist strap key, and belt drive. A digital dash on top of the dummy fuel tank houses the charging ports. Once underway, there are no gears, of course, and no significant engine noise and the instant response of the torque-rich motor can easily take first-time electric riders by surprise. In fact, engine response off small throttle openings is a little abrupt compared to a typical petrol-powered superbike, even in the Vector's low-torque urban mode. But once accustomed it's an incredibly easy bike to ride. From a standing start or accelerating from 50 miles per hour, it's simply a case of twist and go. Overtaking is effortless, with no gears to worry about and no revs to manage. Just direct torque on demand. How fast is it? The 399 volt motor produces an extremely juicy peak of 128 pound FT of torque and 117 horsepower of power directed to the back wheel via a belt drive, not a chain, which was originally shown on the concept bike, but top speed is limited to 200 km per hour, or 120 miles per hour, with arc quoting as 0 to 100 km per hour, 0 to 62 miles per hour, time of 3.1 seconds. On the road it feels as quick and full of energy as, say, a BMW S1000RR. It is a mighty performer. To help it run into turns and carry lots of corner speed, ARC has deliberately dialed in minimal engine braking. This means there's relatively little Regan in the powertrain, which in turn gives the Vector something of a two-stroke feel, helping the rider flow into corners. Finished production Vectors will have multiple riding modes and rider aids, including lean-sensitive traction control and conventional ABS, developed in partnership with Continental. 
These were still to be installed into our bike and, certainly, traction control will be needed as I could feel the front wheel go light on occasions over crests. The Vector weighs in at 529 pounds, 240 kilograms, about par for an electric bike with sporting intent but about 40 or more kilos overweight for a 2020 superbike. ARC's development team knew that a hub center steering system would manage those extra kilos better than traditional teleforks and allow a steep and sporty steering head angle to boot. The team was also unconstrained by the need to design around the usual fixtures and fittings, like a radiator, water pipes, and exhaust, as well as having no significant engine heat to worry about. The Vector does feel heavy when pushing it around, there's no crawler or reverse gear, but once a leg is thrown over the 825mm carbon seat for the first time and those carbon BST wheels are turning, that weight simply falls away. That steep 20-degree rake angle makes the ARC feel like a much lighter machine. It turns so quickly that it took a few miles to recalibrate as I was constantly steering too soon and hitting the apex too early, before picking up the bike and having a second stab at it. Within a few miles on twisty roads I found myself using less input at the bars and pegs to make it turn. I'd say that the Vector steers faster than any other electric superbike I've ridden, including the Energica I raced at Isle of Man TT. But it remains planted and super stable as the pace gets serious. With suspension and braking forces separated and a relatively light spring controlling the ride, you can feel the supple front end tracing road imperfections. There's no sense of detachment, which can happen with some funny front ends. The rear suspension uses a directly mounted TT Exolines unit, which is on the firm side and only comes into its own when the road opens and the traffic clears. Like a race bike on the road, the Vector doesn't want to be ridden slowly. It needs a bit of speed to bring its suspension into its ideal operating window, and ideally a bit of space too. Its natural habitat is flowing ribbons of asphalt where it can settle into corners, front tire tracking to the millimeter, rear driving the immense wave of direct torque into the road as the bike surges, like no other bike can surge, from one set of bends to the next. Stopping duties fall to two Brembo Stylema monoblock calipers gripping 320mm discs. The rear is also a Brembo item, a 240mm disc operated from the handlebar and leaving the bespoke foot pegs looking slick and lever-free. Our test bike didn't have ABS fitted but customer bikes will have non-lean-sensitive ABS. As with many HCS machines, Braking is immense, but takes a little getting used to, especially with so little engine braking. Unlike some HCS systems, you can feel the front tire loading as weight transfers forward onto the front tire's contact patch, and you feel the stopping power build. Meanwhile the rear brake lever on the handlebar performs like a scooter's and is very effective. It struggles a little in town, especially as the rear suspension setup is hard and the steering lock is limited. Add that high seat and instant torque as you crack open the throttle, and I can see most owners heading for the countryside or track immediately. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.